Ukrainian troops are working to consolidate gains in the country's east. And with Russian soldiers gone, newly liberated Kharkiv residents are coming to terms with what they endured. Nick Schifrin visited a town north of Kharkiv in ruins after six months of Russian occupation. The battle for Borsheva ended in Russian defeat, but not without a fight. Ukrainian troops, motivated to reseize their own land, battled hard for a week. First with artillery, then from multiple sides, to capture a town with a population of only 400. The Russians had spent six months digging in. They left behind food. And an armored personnel carrier Ukrainian soldiers have claimed as their own. One wears a U.S. Navy hat taken from a Russian tank. Andrei is a junior lieutenant. This was his first major battle. To be honest, it was quite fierce. It's hard to compare for me with something, but the Russians were pushing us pretty hard. Why do you think you were able to reseize this area? Their commanders abandoned them. The situation was a deadlock, but their problem is that their communication system doesn't go from top to bottom. Their commanders must have fled, and they didn't know about it until some time later. So whenever they see cracks in their ranks, they flee. He said without American artillery, his command would not have launched the counteroffensive. What's your message to the Ukrainians who had to live through occupation in this area now that you're here? I thank them that they survived through this and they stayed alive because a lot of people lost everything. All they suffered is incredible pain. Liberation is like removing a bandage and exposing deep wounds. What happened to you during occupation? You are here from the first minute. I can't speak. We still can't believe it's all quiet now. They were firing 24-7 from here. It never stopped. We were living on the front line. We lived in the basement, and the Russians were all around us. Irina Mikhailova and her husband, Sergei Popov, had two choices, move to Russia or stay here in the crossfire. There were tanks firing. It was very scary. We were sitting in the basement, hunched down, and I didn't know if the roof would collapse. I was always thinking, how was I going to die? Whether they would execute me or not. They say the first Russian soldiers who arrived were special forces who echoed Kremlin propaganda. They were looking for the, quote, enemies. They said, we will save you. Don't be afraid. We're Russians. We came to liberate you. And I told them, you liberated us. No home, no car. You liberated me from everything. She walks me down the town's single road toward their home. There is no heating, no water. She prayed through the cold every night that her home would survive. Thank you for letting us into your home. This was supposed to be a summer home, a sanctuary away from the city. It's a mess. They've spent most of their time downstairs in the cellar or a nearby basement. Despite the damage, they vow to rebuild. What will you do now? Will you stay here? Yes. Yes. I pray to God they don't shoot here anymore. Most importantly, they don't shoot, and that's it. I can live in the cold without water. I just don't want them to shoot. It will take a long time here to fix all that's been broken. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Nick Schifrin in Borsheva.